And without further ado, I would love to introduce um, our guest for today, colleague Andrew Mercer, coming to us from the beautiful province of Newfoundland and Labrador. And yes, I'm biased. I am from Newfoundland and Labrador, so it just makes it extra special for me today. So thanks, Andrew, for coming out. I just want to tell you a little bit about um, Andrew before I hand over um, the reins to him. So for over 20 years, Andrew Mercer has been a pioneer in online music education. Since 2002, he has been teaching music to public school students throughout Newfoundland and Labrador entirely over the internet. We actually have it on good authority that Andrew very well may be the very first person in the world to have done this, this work. Andrew can always be found at the forefront of cutting edge technologies. Much of Andrew's innovative work in technology and music education has been featured in numerous publications and media sources such as the Canadian Music Educator, Popular Science, The Wall Street Journal, The Global Mail, CNN, Nippon TV, and his educational YouTube channel has over 5.5 million views. Andrew has also had the opportunity to share his work at national and international conferences and symposia, including the ISME Conference, TEDx, MTNA National Conference, NAM, and MENC. So whether it is blockchain technologies or the latest virtual reality platforms, Andrew can be found exploring ways to offer students new and exciting learning opportunities and environments. And yes, he is the unofficial dragon slayer and um, he may have helped Luke Skywalker blow up the um, Death Star. Um, so. Fiction. <laughs> fiction. Absolute so fiction. Please join me in, uh, with, with our um, digital applause. Um, please welcome and join Andrew. Thank, Thank you. Andrew for coming out. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here with you. It's a pleasure to be here. I see some, uh, I see some, uh, a couple of uh, familiar names here too. So it's great to be. It's great to be here, and um, um, you know, it's a. Uh, uh, I, I it, it, sometimes I gotta wonder. Like we talk, myself and Liam were talking earlier about. Somebody asked me for a bio a little while ago, and I asked if I could, if it could be fiction or or nonfiction. You know, uh, it really today, if I somebody asked me to describe what music education was going to be, in June of 2020, would this be fiction? I mean, really, it's this is this is kind of like who who knew this was going to come? You know, who was expecting this one? So, I mean, the challenges we have are are, are pretty out there. Now, so like um, uh, Lynn was saying, uh, I've been teaching music online for a long, long time. Um, uh, let me just show you something. Oh wait, no, I my screen share is disabled, uh, Angela. So uh, in Newfoundland, Labrador, uh, we uh, we're surrounded by water for the island part of our province, and the um, uh, the when people settled here, they settled in the uh, around the coastline because oh, here we go. Uh, they settled around the coastline because uh, of uh, the fishery. So all of our communities are all around. You know, they're all around the coast. There's hardly anybody in here except people like Lynn from Gander, which is actually around right here somewhere. But every, but everything, all the, the the communities are all around the coastline. So what that meant was that we had uh, loads and loads of um, communities until very, even today that are very small that you can only access by boat on a good day. So a lot of our communities are um, have such small populations that they 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 can't justify having specialized teachers like music teachers in there. So, um, so that's where I've been. I've been teaching music to these small and rural isolated communities around the province. So right from the, up in the top of Labrador at Nain, right on down the south coast and Gray River. So we've, I've been doing that. Now I teach high school, um, instrumental and general music in high school, some vocal stuff as well. But, um, but I've been doing that since like around 2002. So it's, uh, it's been pretty crazy. Back when I started doing it, back around 2002, it was dial-up and YouTube wasn't invented and neither was Facebook or any of these other ones. So the resources that we use every day now, they weren't invented. So the challenges we had back then were very different than the challenges now. Um, there still are some things that are still constant, uh, but the challenges uh, were very different back then. Now, when we're talking about online music education, um, whether it's band or it's general music or it's choral or whatever it is, we're going to have challenges that are some are monumental and some are 
quite doable. And I kind of think of it as like a landscape where we say that uh, like a mountain range where the the really tough stuff, the stuff that's like like you performing Mahler in a public performance, that's up here. Okay, that's like top of the mountain. Okay, but underneath all of these top ones, like like performing live shows or performances or rehearsals and things like that, there those are the hardest things. Those are the things that are probably the most tricky, the most demanding. Um, as we go down a mountain range, there's a lot of outcomes that are that are beneath here that are not the hardest things in the world that are very attainable, very doable. So, um, so we need to, at the very least, start with the lowest hanging fruit, and work our way up to these performance uh, opportunities and the things that are very that have very, very big challenges. So. Um, there's a uh, uh, an old friend of mine. Oh, I got to say one thing first too. I was telling Lynn about this earlier. So I went for a walk with my wife this morning, around here in in Newfoundland. And um, it was when we went to leave. My wife said, "Like, how cold is it out?" So I stepped out the door and I came back in and I said, "Winter jacket, mitts, hat, everything." So so we put on our winter coats and we put on our hat, like our winter hat and the mitts, and we went for a walk. And when I was we were walking down by the water down by the ocean and uh, the the mist was sideways typical Newfoundland and I thought about you guys and I thought in Newfoundland if you've got to wait for a good day to do anything outdoors if you're waiting for the perfect weather to go outside and to do something you're never going to get outside because the weather is never perfect I mean the weather's never any good ever so anyway it's the same thing we got here there's a lot of things that we are going to come up against that are going to challenge our patience and our professional abilities. But, you know, if we wait until the perfect opportunity and say, well, I'm not going to do it until I can have a live performance with a 65-piece band, I I'm not going to do it. Well, you know, we, we got to work around that. We got to try to find um, ways around it so we can offer solid music education uh, even in these troubled times. So we're going to, we need to look through that kind of thing. So. Kelly Walsh is the, she's an old friend of mine. She's the artistic director of Shalloway. And um, she's the president of Coral Canada. And she did this, she said this quote uh, a few weeks back. It says, I'll read it to you. It's, I thought it was really cool. She says, if choir is only about singing and performing, there will be no choir for a while. If choir is about teaching and learning, growing, connecting, community, cultural exp exploration, transmission, and innovation, then we will find a way to have choir. So I thought that was really telling from Kelly because sometimes um, we, we uh, get stuck on what we see and what we've always known as being what our ensembles are. And, and we need to sometimes step back and say, wait a second, there's a lot more to this than the things that are causing us the most grief in this new situation that we're in. So. We're going to talk about some tools. Now, I've been doing this for 20 years. I have, like, some answers, but not, not everything, obviously. So if there, there may be things that I'm going to throw out here today, and you may take and, and think about different ways of using it. Or there may be things that you may ask me, and I just may not know, and we can figure out as we go. So um, I, I'm, I really want to give you guys rubber on the road, like tools and tricks and tips and stuff that's going to actually work for people. And I can see a lot of sun there. You guys are sitting out on the deck and stuff. Yeah, you know what you can do with yourself, right? I mean, you're out on the deck and that. Very good. Take a hint. I, I might, I, I got, I got skin problems from being outside in the wind this morning. Anyway, so let's keep going. So first of all, um, I, I'm going to talk extremely briefly about philosophy. Look really hard at what it is that you have that you want to accomplish with your groups, with your ensembles, with your educational situation. Think really hard about what it is that you want to accomplish. And then let's let's find the tools that are going to best do that. Okay, so don't just go out and start looking at Bitmoji and 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 Zoom and and, and all these other things and then but really you may not need you may not need half of that. That might not do it for you. You may not even need some of these things. So you'll spin your wheels. So think a little bit first. My old grandfather used to say, measure, measure twice, cut once. So the same sort of deal here. We don't want to go spinning our wheels. So be very careful about that. Now, um, I want to share, I want to share with you guys, because sharing is nice. I want to share 
a uh, English and French document with you guys. I think this is going to work. I hope it's going to work for you. This is um, a document that Coral Canada, um, there you go, Coral Canada uh, sent out this, um, they did this um, page. I'm not going to read it to you. Uh, but it's planning for your choir in uncertain times, a framework. And you know, I got this yesterday in another, in a choral um, session I was just, I was just sitting in on. And uh, boy, there's a lot of things in here that apply to everything music education that we're challenged with. So I, I'm going to, I just, I just gave you this in the text window in the chat, which I'm keeping an eye on. So you guys can all have a look at it. Take it, you know, print it out, have a look through it. This is really good food for thought. And a lot of what I'm going to talk about today just keeps coming back to this framework. So, you know, and I'm not going to have all the answers. This here is like, this would be like a 40 hour presentation was on this page. So I'm going to, I'm going to be touching on a few things here. Okay. Now, hey Siri, set my timer for 10 minutes. So it, we need strategies in order to be able to uh, make sure that we engage the best we can with our students. I don't leave a lot of these things a chance. I'll be the first to say I'm stunned as a block of wood, okay? So I want to make sure that things are going to happen as they need to happen, and I don't trust me to keep track of time. I'm not keeping track of time because of you guys. I'm keeping track of time for engagement. So. I'm going to talk a little bit about this later, but what I want you guys to do now for me, if you don't mind, in the chat, I want you to answer the question, what town are you teaching in? What town do you teach in? What town do you work in? Just put it in the chat. What town do you work in? Everybody here, please. Now, I also see that some of you got your video turned off. God love you. That's okay. No problem. If you want to have your video turned off, it's okay. I love seeing your beautiful face, though, but it's okay if you want to leave it off. If you, and if you know what? If you don't want to turn it on, um, that's cool, but you may want to consider turning it on and having it like say, you know, if you don't want to have your face on it, you know, here you go, look. So you, it's up to you, you don't have to, but you know what, if you're here like this, and I, you're, I'm talking to you, at least I can see some of you. And you're not gone, and you're, and you're not like, you're not here like this. Well, some of you maybe you are, but, but you know, you're not like, you know. Or you're not doing whatever. So, so the thing is, you may want to consider, even if you if you didn't have your camera on, you may want to consider having it on your hands, or having it on your elbow, or something. Some I don't know. Think about it. We'll talk more about it later. So, um, first of all, I want to talk about synchronous and asynchronous. London, Oakville, Aurora, Brandon's in Aurora. Hello, Andrew in Toronto. Hello. I'm doing a session next week for the uh, uh, Catholic School District in Toronto, so maybe I'll see you there. Um, Mrs. Saga, good stuff, guys. Uh, Michael, good to see you. Shannon, good to see you. Greg, hello. Uh, yeah, good to see everybody. Sasha, good to see you. Or Sashi, good to see you in Oakville. Um, so, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, synchronous and asynchronous. First of all, synchronous is what we're doing here. It's live. Me and you, we are we're interacting. And, and this is a synchronous session. This is a synchronous thing we're doing here. I gave you that this document from Coral Canada. Okay? This Coral Canada document, that's asynchronous. So asynchronous and synchronous, we need to be really aware of that. Because that's, um, in broad strokes, that's our fuel that's going, to, that's going to power what we're doing. When we're doing a live class in front of live students more than one or two like in front of a group we need to have synchronous and asynchronous material so synchronous being the live stuff talking away to you on the phone or or talking on video um, and asynchronous being a video a recording a document practice time things that are away from me things that i don't have to hold your hand on i don't have to do with you it's asynchronous okay so what you want to do in a live setting is you want to be able to balance the two. Don't think about your live classes as being something where chalk and talk. Start off at the beginning of the session, and then at the at 50 minutes later, they leave. You, you don't want that. You want to be able to break it up into portions where they're going to have tasks to do from time to time. And we're going to come up with that a little bit later. Um, Aaron and Dan, hello to you too from Charlie. <laughs> How you getting on? Nice to see you. 
Uh, good to see you guys. Uh, so I got beard envy going on there. I got I got some beard envy, Charlie. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. There you go. Look. Look, Gray's a badger. Uh, so uh, anyway, um, and look, but so look at this. Look, look. I'm working it. Uh, yeah, two minutes for looking so good. So anyway, when you're doing your live sessions, you want to make sure that um, you you don't just have a session where they're always on you. You need to make sure that you have opportunities for students. You might say, okay, everybody, go practice that now. I'll give you 10 minutes or I'll give you 15. Or can everybody please go to blah, blah, blah and take out that coloring sheet and color that thing in I'll give you five minutes or whatever the thing is you know but you want to be able to go synchronous and asynchronous so I'm going to talk to you about some strategies of why you do that in a little bit but bottom line is let's say let's say me and Charlie there we want to talk about uh, a beard sculpting okay want to talk about that I want some time to do that alone so I'm going to have to take Charlie out into a breakout room by himself. I'm going to talk to you a bit more about that, how to do that a little later. But me and Charlie, we'll go into a different room. But while I'm gone to a different room, you guys are going to work on something on your own. You see, so then I can work with Charlie and I can come back. And okay, guys, we're back. Now let's continue on where we were. And you know what I'm saying? Just like you would do in a normal class. You go down by somebody's music stand. You say, yeah, you're having trouble with that. What's that rhythm there? Let's go through that at me and you, okay? Right? So you need to be able to do that. If you don't have synchronous and asynchronous material together, let me rephrase that. If you don't have any asynchronous material to go along with your lesson plan or your rehearsal plan, then you you'll you basically you'll say, okay, everybody, just stop for a second. I'm going to go talk to Charlie. So talk amongst yourselves. I mean, come on. You're not going to do that. It's going to be do this for me. And I'm going to go talk to Charlie and I'll be back in a few minutes. That's what it has to be. So you need to make sure that there's always a... Um, Alicia, you can't hear me? Alicia, having trouble hearing me? Is it my accent? So, I'm not sure, Alicia. You may want to check your, uh, your speaker settings and stuff. So, um, we're going to talk a little bit about asynchronous and asynchronous in depth as we go along here. But... But right now in our school systems here in Canada, generally we're seeing synchronous and asynchronous being provided by Google Suites. Okay, so like, so that will be in a synchronous, synchronous meaning video conferencing, it's Google Meet. And for asynchronous, you're talking about Google Classroom. Now, there's other things we can use too, but, but, but we, if we stick to what's supported, it's, it's Google Meet for, for the synchronous, and Google Classroom for the asynchronous. Okay, now in high school, in some districts, I understand you're going to be using Brightspace. That's cool. I use that for like forever because we've been, I've been using that for, I don't know, 12 years or something online. Anyway, but um, Brightspace is, or D2L it used to be, um, that's the same sort of idea. Now, so what we would do in a rehearsal is you would have the live session like we're doing here and then you would have the you'd have material in Google Classroom that students would be able to bring up uh, during the session and when I say that I'm listen I gotta tell you I am I've been teaching online for like out of 20 years so so I'm referring to the remote teaching okay now you may have an opportunity where you have a student physically sitting in front of you maybe social distances or or whatever that's going to be I'm not referring to that Okay, because that situation is something I'm going to leave for somebody else at another time. Because really, my forte is doing instrumental music online. Okay, entirely online. So, just to put that out of the way. Okay, so Google Meet, as you know, I think you probably all know, is for video conferencing. And Google Classroom is for, is for putting up materials, recordings and videos and music charts and, and all kinds of things that are asynchronous that the students are going to be able to interact with. So we want to make sure we balance those two. As you're doing your lessons, you're balancing that. Okay? Um, so, yeah. Um, and I want to... And let me talk a little bit for a second about... Yeah, let me... Breakout rooms, breakout rooms, breakout rooms. Yeah. So let me let me just talk to you a little briefly. No, I'll bring it up later. Uh, if I if I do if I don't mention how to actually work with individual students in a group setting, 
then let me know because I'm, I want to talk about it, but I'm going to leave it for a little bit later about how you can do a breakout room where me and Charlie can go and we can talk about our beards in another place. But let, remind, if I don't mention it, remind me. Okay, now I want to talk a little bit. I'm going to go over some Google Meet techniques, but we got to go down to the grassroots. Audio and video. Okay, we got to talk a little bit about that, about what works and what doesn't. Now, we're in here in Zoom right now. And, um, you know, I've got... I've, Zoom has Zoom has an option in here that uh, allows you to do uh, what's called original sound. Now, can I have a show of hands? Have you ever heard of what I'm talking about? Original sound in in Zoom? Some of you have. Yeah, I'm seeing some of you have. Okay, good stuff. Well, in um, um, in um, my alarm is going to go off. So before I go any further, can you guys all in the chat window, if you don't mind, can you guys all put in? What is the main device that you use to do your basic everyday computing? Do you use an iPad? Do you use your phone? Do you use a um, do you use a, a Mac or a, a Windows or what? What is it? Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Excellent. Now, I think my alarm is going to go off. I don't have to turn things off. Okay, I, I don't have to turn off my own alarm. I am here giving you a session on technology. I don't have to turn my alarm off on my phone. Ah, there we go. Okay, good. <laughs> Hey Siri, set an alarm for 10 minutes. Okay, I've set an alarm. For Thank you. So now, um, uh, so that's, uh, so yeah, and if you notice what I'm doing, this is kind of, it seems a little silly what I'm doing in here. I'm asking you questions. But what I'm doing is I'm getting every single person in this session to, to keep engaged with me. Even though I'm asking you questions like what town are you from? and uh, what kind of device you use. I, I am legitimately interested in that. But if this was in a band setting, you would say those things. You would say, every, you set your timer and you'd say every 10 minutes you're going to poll the students because you know what, we forget. And we talk and talk and talk and we do things and we forget that we ask, nobody's interacted with me in 10 minutes. So you set your alarm for 10 minutes so you get some interaction from every single student. And that's going to help you with your attendance later too. I'm going to talk to you about how to keep attendance, but this is one of the techniques, but I'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about video cameras. Now, a lot of people, you guys may have video cameras on your iPads or on your Chromebooks or on your laptops or whatever. And you know what? Those cameras work, good stuff. You may need to buy a camera. Um, I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not affiliated with like Logitech or anybody like that, but I do, I, I like when people ask me that, what camera should I buy? Um, I don't know. Logitech is really good. They end up like, it's just, you plug it in, it works. There's probably better ones out there and I invite you to shop around, but if you go to Logitech.com, you're going to see some really good options, lots of price ranges, good cameras. Um, have an eye on the uh, the like the, uh, the the like the the range of it, how wide it sees. You can see my camera here. This is pretty wide. It's it's showing. I'm pretty close to the camera. I mean, my camera is only right here, so it's it's pretty wide. This is a Logitech camera, um, and this one's pretty cool. But um, you don't need to have like the best camera in the world. But if you do have a decent camera with a wide angle like this, you see, I'm a violinist, so. I'm playing violin. Oh, and I, I gotta go. I gotta get my violin, and I I gotta play something for you because I want to demonstrate something. Give me a second. So, so um, if I'm playing my violin, I want students to be able to see me. You know, to see like you know. So this, there's a, you know, if if I'm my camera is really close and I I can't get any vision out of it, it's. It's going to be harder for people to see. So a nice wide angle lens is what you want on your camera. So you can look into that. See that as one of the things you're looking for. Now, I want to also talk about the platform here. I mentioned earlier about original sound before my alarm went off. Original sound. In here, I got original sound turned on. So if I play... <laughs> So you hear that. Now I'm going to turn that option off. Now let's have a listen, see if you hear any difference. You hear any difference? You hear the difference? I'll turn original sound back on. So I don't know if you notice a difference, but when you have original sound on, there's it doesn't compress 
and Dan is not, he said, Dan sees it, yeah, and I see, uh, Jennifer does too, so, so you guys, uh, you hear that it's not compressed, but when I turn original sound off, and it starts compressing, it starts making the sound really difficult to get a good, it's difficult to get a good sound with an instrument, it's the way that the algorithms work in the software, so if you're in a private setting, and your school is saying, you can use, or like say, if you're in a setting where you can choose the platform you use, you might want to go with Zoom for the sound options, now, that being said, I would say it's going to be very soon that we're going to see Google Meet and other platforms have the same option as well. But for music right now, Zoom is the best. I get that question all the time. What's the best platform for music? Today, it's Zoom. Hang on. All right, I'm back. Now, okay. <clears throat> And I'm here all week, so, you know, tip, tip your waitress. So, um, uh, let's keep going. So, the, um, uh, the camera situation here, yeah, maybe look at something like, um, like a um, uh, Logitech product. And Logitech, because they end up, they're pretty good stuff. They, you plug them in and they work. They're, and they're, den they're generally really good um, uh, lighting. So, if you're in a low light situation, it doesn't get really really cruddy it's 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 not bad now lighting um i have okay you might be saying to yourself what does this have to do with band well you know what look if you're if you you want to have the best educational experience for your students possible so you want the best sound and video because this is all they get this is all they have so you want to be able to create a setting where they're going to get the best sound and the best um way they can do it yeah oh um uh, oh yeah okay thank you uh and bellissima thank you bellissimo thank you very much that was really good i was wondering if i was going to have to do that in here to show you how to set up original sound but somebody just shared the link excellent so that's the link that's how you follow to set original sound it'll take i don't know three seconds it's really easy but anyway that's it so lighting i have this light right here beside me and i have another light over here beside me so if i turn these off now, it still looks okay, but look at these shadows and stuff. It's not doing a thing for my complexion. It's like, you know, but if I light this one up, looking better already. And now if I light this one up, look at that, Hollywood. I'm ready for the big screen. So, like, the thing is, it, this is just lamps. It's a lamp over here. I mean, I should tell you it's a, it's a $5,000 lighting rig that I bought from Henry's. In a, no, it's a lamp. And this one here, this is a little LED light that I have, but you can use anything. Okay, so you might want to light yourself around so it's nice and, nice and, um, yeah. Jennifer, you made a really good point about Zoom. The reason why a lot of the schools and school districts and ministries won't allow it is because Zoom doesn't conform to the, that online safety protocols. That's the reason why we don't use it in schools. It's just, I'm just saying, if you guys are in a private place, somebody's got a microphone open. If you're in a private place, and uh, uh, like you have the option of choosing Zoom, you may want to. Or in your private studio, I teach online all the time. I use Zoom. But I mean, I'm not teaching, I don't, my students in school, I don't. I use Google Meet. Well, I use, I use Blackboard Collaborate Ultra, but that's a different thing. But the fact is that when I teach my private fiddle students, I use Zoom. It gives me the best sound. Okay, lighting again. Back to lighting. See this? If you have light behind you, like a lot of you do right now, like a window, or something like that it makes this kind of look you see like it makes it it's it's what they use for like uh, witness protection program and I can call a few of you by name if you want me to people who look like they're in witness protection David and some other people mark you're pretty witness protection there because you got a window behind you so the thing is if you do if you do have a window behind you or a really bright light behind you it's gonna make you really dark so you don't want that shadow. The computer is trying to compensate. So have your face well lit. Okay, so, so be, have your face really well lit when you do your video so that you, so that the students have no trouble seeing you. And if you are doing anything or demonstrating embouchure or something, make sure it's always very well lit. Okay, so a couple of lamps. Piece of cake. Come on. Okay, so, so that's that. Um, next thing. Oh, I want to talk to you about multiple cameras. Guys, listen, I'm sorry. I'm going through a lot of material here. And this is a lot of nuts and bolts. Is that okay? Like, I'm going 100 miles an hour. Okay, yeah, Linda. Okay, good. God love you. Okay, so I'm going to do, I'm going to type in on my computer OBS. 
So I'm opening up OBS. Now OBS is a freebie. It's absolutely free. It's a free piece of software. It's open source. And um, it's, a, it's a piece of software we use for a lot of things. It's, it can do a ton of stuff. I've actually produced shows and stuff. With it. it's, you don't need it for any of that. You just need it for the basics. So, and I'm not going to show you how to use OBS today because, you know, we just don't have time. But I'm going to show you what OBS can do for you, you banned people out there. So I'm going to do a screen share again here. I use, I use so many different platforms that, like, I forget how to use stuff sometimes. I'm going like, wait, where's the button that does that thing? And, you know, where's that thing? I'm seeing myself. I don't actually look like that, do I? Holy cow. Charlie, I, I, got, I got a long way to go and a short while to get there. So um, you, can you guys see my two cameras now? I got this camera here, which is built into my laptop. And I got this camera over here, which is sitting on top of a skateboard. Yes, on top of a skateboard. So I have two cameras. So what I'm doing is I'm just demonstrating that it's, that it's possible very easily to do two cameras. And if I want to, I can go, okay, well, let's make this a little bigger. You know, let's make it over here or put it over that way and make this one over here. And you can do what you want. There's... Siri is telling me it's time to ask my students another question, preferably preferably based on the content we're studying. So, what is your, in, in like one or two words, come on, I, I have no time to read. One or two words, what's your biggest concern for the fall? For September, what's your biggest concern right now? I mean, when it comes to band, your students, your program, what's your biggest concern right now? Just a couple of words in the text for me, please. Hey, Siri. Can you set me a timer for 10 minutes, please? Your timer is set for 10 minutes. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you, Maggie. Yeah, thanks, Maggie. Uncertainty, yeah, for sure. A lot of uncertainty there. Job security. Jennifer, I hear that a lot. I've heard that a lot. Live rehearsals from Viral. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Can, uh, can this, cancel music, cancel music. You know, one, funding, Alicia. Yeah, instrument, starting instrumentalist. Uh, Troy, I got to tell you, Troy, the very first time I ever gave a violin lesson online, the first time, I don't know when it was, it was a long, long time ago, first lesson, in the first three minutes, she broke a string, and she was like 300 kilometers from me, she broke a string, I, in, the, in the fiddle, I had shipped the fiddle through the shipper, but when the shipper got it to her, it had been jostled around so much, it was out of tune. So we had to tune it up. And of course, a fiddle, tune it up. She broke a string the first three minutes. So, you know, you're talking about like, you know, I should have glued them. Like we said, who has it said that earlier? Glued the pegs. They, I mean, the fiddle was tuned in the factory. I totally agree. Anyway, um, student participation, yeah, I understand. And these are real reasons. These are real important things. Live rehearsal concerts, yeah. And Bureau, that's a, that's a big one, I know. Not able to hear instruments, yeah, that's a big one too. Gotcha on that. I mean, it's a funding thing, face-to-face, -face, yeah. So listen, there's a, I'll, you guys have very real, very real concerns, no doubt about it. And, okay, um, so I'm going to close out OBS. So OBS, what it does, on OBS, you have the option, when you open it up, you can say, I'm on the screen in OBS, I want to have two cameras. So I have two cameras. If I have three cameras plugged into my computer, I can have three. So you can go to like, you know, your bargain basement tech, tech store and buy like three $10 cameras or $5 cameras or whatever, plug them all into your computer and OBS will recognize them all. And you can make your own little grid. So if you want, if you're doing, if you're doing saxophone and you want to be able to show embouchure, well then you have one of the cameras on whatever you do with that thing. I'm a violinist. Come on, give me a break. But the, you have it on here so you can show whatever it is that you show. Okay. And like what I do with my violin students is that I have a second camera that is focused on my hand here, okay? And I have a string from the ceiling with a little rubber ball on a tack. And the rubber ball is tied to the string, so it's just dangling in the air. And I know that if I put my violin under that rubber ball, my hand is right on camera. Perfectly. And it's the whole thing. So when I show a student a posture or something on my fingers, I know that if I'm under the ball, if I'm under the ball, then I know that that camera is going to camera is going to pick me up.
So you can do things like that. You can have multiple cameras on you. If you're, con if you're teaching conducting or something, you want to have a side view, you know, or whatever over the... I got a piano friend of mine who has two, camera on her face, camera on her hands. And she says sometimes she puts it on the floor for her feet when she wants to show that. You can have multiple cameras going if you want to. OBS. It's called Open Broadcast System, but everybody refers to it as OBS. And it's free, entirely free. It's an open source application. And please, whenever possible, support open source because all of our students can download it and use it. They can use it at home. Generally, open source gear works on old equipment. So OBS will run on an old computer. So will Audacity and and uh, Helm and a whole bunch of other great music apps. We can talk about that another time. By the way, just as an aside, I have a, a free thing that you guys can use with your students called Video Guide to Audacity. It's a whole series that shows kids how to use Audacity, has all these lesson plans and all this stuff. It's all for free. You can take it down, fill your boots. It's on andrewmercer.ca. And it's a video guide to Audacity. I use it every year with my students for years and years. It's, it's a full suite of tutorials to show how to use Audacity and a whole bunch of activities and projects and strategies for you to evaluate what they're doing. I use it with my guitar students and my fiddle students and my team whistle students so that they can record themselves and do all kinds of things. AndrewMercer.ca. Thanks, Jennifer. That's the one, AndrewMercer.ca. That's me. AndrewMercer.ca. I always wanted to say, yes, the Andrew Mercer, but I've never had the opportunity. So there you go, I just said it. Okay, now, uh, let's move on. Um, audio, audio sound. Um, oh, before I go on to audio, let's just talk a little bit about cameras on and cameras off. Okay, cameras on and cameras off. I mentioned to you guys earlier about having your cameras on, and a lot of you have them on. I'm looking at Candace Hester's on. Sarah, I see. Stuart, I see. Stuart, nice background. I love the northern lights going on. That's cool. Love it. It's good stuff. It's good to see everybody. Jody is there, Jody's iPad. Um, so, you know, what I do with my students, and you might notice that I, I talk to you guys a lot. Um, I see Anastasia there, and James, and uh, I see Greg, and somebody with Greg. Hello, somebody with Greg. Uh, nice to see you. Um, when I'm teaching online, I, always, I take a lot of time to interact with the students. I'll have 25 at a time. I'll always be going down through the names constantly. I'll say, how are you doing today, Alicia? Hey, Anastasia. Andrea, how are you doing? Andrew, good to see you. Because that's what you do normally anyway. So you try to do a lot of interaction with people as much as you can. Okay? Like, don't just leave it so it's just you. Try to get them as much as you can. Siri's going to give us another question in a couple minutes, and you're all going to respond to that again. Again, that's interaction. That's keeping everybody engaged. So, now, let's move on. The, um, the camera on and camera off. In some districts around the country, the school districts have been saying, students are not required to have the cameras on. Cool. And some places are saying students are not to have their cameras on. Okay. Um, we have to... Uh, evaluation. We're always evaluating everything we do. And if a student is, is there and they're going like, yeah, like, you know, like, I don't, you know, like, I don't get this, you know. You're going to see them and you're going to go like, hey, what's going on? You know, you, are you having trouble? If we don't have cameras on, you can't see that. I, there's a lot of issues with having cameras on from people like students don't want to see this behind I, I i totally get it i mean i'm i've been teaching online for 20 years i've had every possible scenario students don't want to see this they don't want to see who's behind them they don't want to see their room they don't want they don't want you to see that they don't have this or they don't have that so asking them to put a camera on that can be pretty of a challenge you know you need to be sensitive about it if you want to ask your students to have a camera on Maybe you ask them to put a sheet behind them. Or well, we saw some of you are using virtual background. You can do that in here, in, Google, in, in Zoom. Google Meet has very basic virtual background options. Um, like I see John Phillips is there, and he's in, where's where that? John, is that like in Japan or somewhere behind you? I'm not sure. Look, looks good. But um, um, there are options to do the virtual background, and that's cool. Um, Google Meet doesn't have that capability really yet. You can, but it's not really there. Give them a month. They'll have it. I'm telling you. It won't, it won't be long, and they'll have that in place. So, But the idea of being able to evaluate the students by what you're seeing, that's important. And, you know, if you guys were all there with me here now, snoozing, I'd be going, I'd be going, Lynn, I don't know if this is working out. I think they're all falling asleep. And Lynn's going to say, it's not because of them. It's because of you. And you know what? That's all part of the evaluation, isn't it? 
So, you know, we want to be able to make sure we can see the students. So if, it's, if you can, try to find a way to very gently get the students to turn the cameras on. Now, the, I, I said to you early, earlier, this is not a bad idea, too. You, see, you guys see me, right? So this is not a bad idea, too, because some students don't want to have their face on. And, uh, you know, whatever. But, you know, if they have their hands, or even if they, it was like this, um, like that. And they're doing class, they're like this. Well, you know, let me tell you one of the evaluations in this. Andrew has not left the building. And if you think your students won't leave the building for a smoke halfway through your rehearsal, you're wrong! Because they will. So you need to make sure that you have some way of safeguard of getting them to all and always know that they're alive and well. I had a student went to an anaphylactic shock one time, many years ago. He went missing. He, I didn't have camera on at the time, but he went missing, wasn't answering. So I called him to the office in the school. Hey, where's Johnny? He, he's, he's not responding to me in class. Is he like messing around? And the secretary said, oh my, I'm sorry. Johnny had a, an incident. He had an anaphylactic shock and he's gone to the clinic. So, you know, you don't know. So really a safety thing. It's better if you, even if you can see their hands, at least you know they're there and they're safe. You know, uh, I've had everything. I've had fist fights happen on these things in my classes. But, and I'm, the, I can't, I'm not there with them. But I can call the school right away and say, get down in the, get down in the room because they're fist fighting. <laughs> you know, anyway, you might want to think about that. Um, the other thing too, uh, about microphone and video is that at the beginning, you may find that they're very reluctant to, uh, to do, to open up their cameras or open up their microphones. But if you give them opportunities to do it and you do it in a nice kind way, they will, they'll warm up to it. And before you know it, they'll be, they'll be doing it all the time. There won't be, there will not be a, uh, it won't be a big issue. It's, it's a novelty at the beginning. I'll give you a, give you an example. All my students in my general music class get a tin whistle. Now my students are all over Newfoundland and Labrador. So they're mailed out a tin whistle at the beginning of the year. So they get a tin whistle. One like this. This still has a wrapping on it. So they get a tin whistle in the mail. Um, and then they have to learn the tin whistle. So the idea is they explore their music through playing the tin whistle. So if we're going to learn something about a, I don't know, a major scale, well, they can play it on their whistle. You get the idea. So they say, sir, I'm not playing the whistle. On, I'm not doing that on the microphone. I'm not playing whistle. On, there's no way in the world. I'm not playing. And you can't make me. I'm not doing it. Okay, I get it. So then the students go, hey, I, do I see Don Pierre there? Don, how you doing? Oh, my jumpings. God love you. Good to see you. Uh, Don's bring, uh, uh, Don is probably the only one of you that don't have to have a dictionary of translation from Newfoundland to English. So Don will translate for everybody a little later. A and Lynn. So anyway, um, when my students this year, uh, uh, I said, no, everybody needs to play for their classmates because it is an outcome. Uh, you know, playing for your peers is an, it's one of the outcomes. So, um, <clears throat> so I said, okay, don't have to play on the microphone, but what we can do is you call me on my phone and I'm going to turn on speakerphone and I'm going to hold speakerphone in front of the microphone, my microphone, and you can play, but you can play on the phone. Oh, okay. okay I'll do that. I made it quite clear that look, this is, you're playing on the microphone anyway. It's just, you're doing it through my phone and there, yes, yeah, cool. And then this person did it. And I say, okay, next time, after next time, let's just do it on a microphone. Okay, fine. Never had a problem after. So this past year, out of all the students I teach around Newfoundland and Labrador, by the end of, like, say, middle of October, nobody questioned the idea of turning a microphone on. They were all going, yeah, you got to play that? Okay, no problem. Turn the microphone on. Boom, you're playing it. That's the way it, it was just they got used to it fast. But if you, if you take the, the view that, well, I'm probably going to not let you do it, well, then you're going to end up, it, it, that's wildfire. Because then the next one says, well, Sally didn't have to do it. Well, why do I have to do it? So you might want to work your way through that. Trust me when I say that 99% of the population will, will not mind in the long term playing on the microphone. So, so there you go. Now, um, we talked about cameras. And I was saying that like uh, Logitech's not a bad choice. I'm not endorsed by Logitech, so please, if there's another brand out there, fill your boots. But the fact is that Logitech tends to be okay. You plug it in, it works, okay? Now, microphones. 
right now I'm on this thing. Okay, I'm on this shotgun. Okay, so this is uh, it's a Neumann shotgun. You don't need this. This is seriously overkill. Okay, but there is a lot of other options out there for microphones. Please get away from your please get away from your laptop microphone. That microphone costs literally a dollar. Okay, it's a dollar. So please like invest a couple of dollars, two or three, in a microphone. So um, they're not that expensive. You can get some pretty decent ones, pretty cheap. Now for microphones, um, uh, let me show you. I got a couple options here. Uh, this is a Plantronics thing, uh, Plantronics, and Plantronics. Um, they, this is a, a Bluetooth thing. So if you want to, if this works for you, you can you can put it on, you know, and you can talk into it here. And you're not stuck up with a cable. So if you take up a sousaphone and you start walking around the room, you're not going to choke yourself. So this something like this might be good. Some of my colleagues who teach online, um, they we have two people waiting to get in. So can uh, Angela? Can you take care of that, or do you want me to hit admit? Um, some of my colleagues that teach online with me, um, they love these because you just charge them up in the morning, and they run all day, and they can they're just free to move around, and there's not nothing in their way, and they can move around the class. And from I, I teach class all the time. Uh, like every single period. So I have one of these desks that can stand up, like you can raise it up. So I can stand up and I can walk around my office and still be on camera and still be on the microphone and not be tangled up in wires. So this may be an option for you. Uh, do, read some reviews on the quality of the sound. That may be something that you may want to look at. So, and then you can also go with like studio microphones, like this sort of thing, like a studio microphone, which which you would plug in like a uh, a standard like a um, XLR microphone cable, um, but if you want to use something like that or an SM58, like a Shure 58 or something, sure thing, it'll be great. But you need to have a box that will let you plug your microphone into your computers, and that's called the audio interface. Now there are lots of different brands. I'm using one here from M Audio. Um, you can get all kinds of brands. They usually start at around 120 or so. You know, something like that. Um, you, you can use that. Then you can use a proper stage microphone or a studio microphone. Like, that's what I'm doing here. So it, that gives you the best quality, I find. But you don't have to do that either. Um, you can also go with the root. Um, I got another one. Hang on. So this is another type. This is another headset type, you know. Um, and But this one is USB. So it's just USB. You plug it into the USB port, and it's like that. So this is cool, too. This is nice. Quality is nice. This is a uh, Plantronics, I think. I think this is a Plantronics. It could, be, it could be Logitech. I'm not sure. There's no name on it, but I think it's Plantronics. So Plantronics is a decent name, too. They generally make telephone-type stuff, but it's good stuff. So that's another one. Now, other companies like um, Blue. Actually, this microphone here. This is a Blue microphone, so the company is Blue. Yeah, blue, not Labatt's blue, but blue, and um, blue makes a whole load of microphones that are USB microphones for your desk, like uh, like the Snowball, which is a blue microphone. The 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 blue Yeti is another microphone. It's a you uh, <laughs> think it, Jennifer. Uh, the blue Yeti is another one. Um, uh, okay, cool, uh, Michael. Uh, I just saw you posted up something from Amazon. I'm not sure what variant that is, but but uh, yeah, I can't open the link right now, but yeah. Um, is there a delay on Bluetooth microphones? I, yeah. So there is a bit of a delay on Bluetooth ones, but it's I don't think it's going to be as big an issue as what our delay is in here. because We're going to talk about that. But there is a tiny delay. With Bluetooth microphones, I would always test, I would always read the review on the audio quality. The reason why I don't use this guy very often, the Bluetooth one here, because the sound quality is not as good. The USB one which is the same company, looks like the same hits it, sound quality is better. Why? I don't know. But I've, I've, I haven't heard a lot of USB ones that I've really liked the sound on. I haven't heard them all. And I'm sure somebody out there can give me 10 examples of ones that have great sound. Read the reviews, listen to the examples on YouTube and stuff like that, and make your own choices. But um, the delay, the latency, that we're, we're going to talk about that in a minute. Because latency is an issue, okay? So you might want to think about that. Listen, you guys are rating good stuff up here, but condensed USB microphones and stuff like that, that's really good. So Blue microphones, they make desktop stuff, and they're, they're good too. Blue Yeti is a good microphone. 
Now, here in Newfoundland Labrador, every school <clears throat> in grades seven to nine was sent out microphones about six or seven years ago as part of an art project. People forgot about them and they were in boxes. So now all the music teachers are going crazy all over Newfoundland and Labrador looking for their microphones that are in boxes. And I was on a session the other day like you guys because what happened generally when people contact me and they say Andrew can you help me with this thing I can't type that fast I usually tell them let's just get on zoom let's just get on zoom and have a chat. So she got on with me and she said I just found seven microphones in a storage room here in the school. So you never know there may be microphones in your in your building. The microphones that she found are USB and they're they're like looks like SM58 but they're made by Samson came with a set of headphones microphone USB fantastic so now she's living the life they're all over Newfoundland and Labrador they may be all over Ontario I don't know think look back and see what you can find there may be something squirreled away in some cupboard do it uh, I know you're all hoarders. You're music people. You're all hoarders. I know you are. Look at my office. It's full of stuff. Like I got a reel-to-reel -reel tape deck there. What am I doing with that? Okay, so I need help. This is intervention. We should. That's a different show. Okay, let's keep going. So um, now, when you're setting up your microphone and your your um, your camera and your microphone, okay, um, be aware of your environment around you. Okay. Now you look around me here. Now you know. Behind every successful musician, there's a spouse rolling their eyes. You know that, right? My wife is that spouse, and she's really good at rolling her eyes. When I look at, look at my room, and she rolls her eyes, this is a mess. So, like, you know, but look, if you look here, students come into my class, my guitars are there, I'm the world's worst guitarist, but they don't know that. Keyboard is over there, I'm horrible, they don't know that, but it looks good. You know, I got drums there, you know, my fiddle is there. You know, so I, I, I got this place set up so it looks impressive when they get on. I mean, isn't that half the battle? Getting, like, get some cred, getting some street cred? So make sure the space you got is set up so it looks nice, so it looks presentable, you know? And, and, and it, you look presentable. I mean, this is, you don't need me to tell you that. So um, I'm still working on that one. My wife rolls her eyes. So um, uh, make sure you, you pay attention to the visual of where you are. Another thing too, I'm just gonna make this in passing, and we're gonna we're gonna. Oh, I forgot my. Oh, I gotta. I'm forgetting things. See, I can't leave things to chance. Okay, watch my video if you don't mind. Now I'm not even looking at my own video here. I don't even know what I look like. Okay, so this is what I see a lot of times. Hi, Andrew. I'm all ready to start teaching online. It's a great day here in my room. Now, how many of you are doing that now? Now, Laura Lee Matthew, I'm seeing you. Look at you. You're ashamed of yourself. You got some nice ceiling, though. Look at that. So, you know, like that's the con that's a very common thing is you get on video conferencing sessions, you get in the class, and it's looking at your tiles. I mean, come on. Get the make sure you frame yourself out, you know, so you, you can see yourself, you know? Yeah, you see. Laura Lee Matthew has the coolest place where she does her stuff on her patio. Very cool. Looks very warm, too. I don't know what to say to you, Laura Lee, because it's not warm here, and I'm very jealous, and I'm trying my best to be nice. I told myself I'd be nice. Okay, let's move on. So make sure your space is good. Quiet. Make sure your space is quiet. If you got a noisy fan over here, turn it off. If you got something over here squeaking or whatever, turn it off. I got this noisy desk. Before we started, I pushed it all the way in so you wouldn't hear it during the show. So make sure that you do that. You try to make your room as nice as you can. Now, I'm going to show you something else, too. I'm looking around at you guys. I'm looking at your face. I purposely take myself off the screen because, and I've seen you do this today, everybody, and you know who you are. I've seen you do this. You look at yourself in the screen because you can see your picture there, and you're looking at yourself, and you're going, actually, it's more like this because you're over there. You're going like, hmm. I'm looking at myself. Yeah, look, I'm looking good. Yeah, that's yeah, I'm looking good. But it's not it's not engaging with the students. The students are right here. So you got to be looking right at the lens. So when you're talking to the students, do that. Talk right into the lens so that they're always engaged with you. So they're looking right at you and they're saying, "Oh my jumpers, I can't look away." His eyes are like, "I can't look away." So that's what you got to do. 
I know it's it's human nature to want to look at yourself in the mirror or in the video preview of yourself. I'm right here. But when I'm looking off camera like that, it really it's not engaging and the students are less likely to connect with you. Just a little bit. Okay. No matter how good looking you are. Okay, so let's go on. Um and I hope this is helping. Um oh, my alarm went off. So, can you guys please uh how many young musicians do you um like if we didn't have a, if we didn't have covid going on right now okay and you were in september you were going to your place to do your band um how many people would you have in front of you in a run of a week in september if we didn't have covid okay how many people are you responsible for in a run of a week 191 130 andrea 100 troy is oh my let's move that 120 you got i can't read that fast 130 230 uh, there's not that many people in newfoundland 400 holy cow that can't be true you're definitely telling me fibs Siri, set a timer for 10 minutes. Hey Siri, set a timer for 10 minutes. Okay. Okay, so, so, okay, um, I should also tell you, no, I'll get to that in a second. I'll get to that in a second. Why I'm getting into all these questions too, because there's another reason, besides keeping you engaged. Um, I asked earlier about what you guys use for your uh, for connecting. Uh, what do you normally use for for being online? And I didn't really pay attention to a lot of the answers. I saw some iPads and stuff like that. If you're doing stuff online, you really need to get away from something like an iPad um, or even a Chromebook. They you you can do it, but you will find that it will it will um, um, you'll it 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 just it's just not enough power. <laughs> Not enough screen. You know, you'll, you'll find that you, you'll need to bring up links and stuff, and it'll just be cumbersome, you know, and you need to bring up attendance, and it'll be cumbersome and stuff. So generally, I suggest, I mean, this is not the rule, but I suggest you try to get on a laptop or a desktop when you're doing these sessions. Um, also, another thing, too, is we're going to talk about bandwidth, wireless. Um, wireless versus wired. Um, if you're wireless, if you are plugged in to, oh, sorry, if you're on wireless like an iPad, or like your computers on wireless, um, your network speeds are just not that not that good. It, there's there's a technology question uh, that I'm not going to get into that causes your stuff to be slow. But your speed will be around 60 megabits uh, download speed and about 30 upload speed. 60 download, 30 upload. Okay, that means your video transmission will be 30, and your video getting back will be around 60. Um, if you're plugged in, it's probably 190 download and probably 140 upload. It's like dramatically faster. That means the quality of your sound is going to be better. The quality of your video is going to be better. You're not going to have dropouts in sound. How many of you have ever had glitchy video? I mean, holy cow. I mean, come on. That's wireless doing that. That's what it is. So here's what I want you to do. I'm going to, I'll type it in here in the in the thing for you. www.speed test oops i can't type very well speedtest.net there you go www.speedtest.net run it now run it now and see what your speed is i'll run it here on mine too uh oh, behind windows i can't see nothing okay so www.speedtest.net now this is even in the session you just click the big go and run it now and see now if you're on an ipad or something it probably won't work because you need to have an app for it but Okay, I'm 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 my download speed, 193, 19, yeah, 191. It's my download speed. It takes about 10 seconds to do this whole test, 10 or 15 seconds. So my download speed, even on with you guys downloading all this stuff that's going on, I'm still at that kind of speed. My upload speed, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Yeah, it's probably gonna be 120 upload. Now, so now, you guys, what was your what was your speed? What was your download and upload speed? Download and upload. Now, so if you're on wireless, which I'm sure most of you are, your download speed should be around 60, 50, something like that. Your upload speed should be somewhere around 20, 30. That's just on the edge of being good enough for that. But type it in the chat window, 23. If you're down in like 10 um, or like below, you need to call your service provider. 179.29, yep. So if you're at a really low speed, like uh, down in the single digits especially, 
then you might want, well, first of all, what I want you to do is to reboot your computer or your iPad or whatever it is you're on, reboot that, and then go to your modem um, and uh, go to your modem and repower your modem. Take the plug out of the wall in your modem, the power plug, and wait for like 10 seconds and plug it back in again. Uh, Don, this was uh, speed, www.speedtest.net, and that's just to check your speed. Now, if I were you guys, I would, thanks Maggie, if I were you, I would test that before every session you do. And if you have like, if you're getting speeds like 3 and 6 and 9, like that, then you're going to say, okay, band, hang on. I'm going to fix something because it, something's wrong and you will not be able to support an online lesson at that kind of speed. Um, reboot your modem and your house and then reboot your um, reboot your computer and then test it again. And if your speeds are still down in like the 10, the 5 range, that kind of speed, then you need to call your service provider. And you know what? They'll probably have a better deal for you anyway. But they will, it's probably something wrong. Uh, my system here was running slow about a year ago. And I called them and they said, oh, that modem you got, that's, that's discontinued. We're going to send somebody over with a new modem for you. And they showed up and installed a new modem. And I had rocket ship speed. So call your service provider. That's an easy one. Holy cow. So there you go. Um, I'm going so fast. I hope I'm not going too fast. Yeah, there you go. Another thing too you can do is have a, have a separate system. This is my hot backup here. I have another computer, a Windows machine. I'm on Mac. I have a Windows machine right here, and this is running. Camera, microphone on it. So that if we got disconnected right now, if my computer crashed right now, I just roll over to that one really fast, and within 10 or 15 seconds, I'd probably be back on with you. So you might want to have a hot backup if you have that availability. Have another machine ready to roll. And that will also let you see what the kids are seeing. Because they, you may be sounding horrible, but you don't know, so you can listen in. Yeah, and Jennifer said that she loses connectivity in some parts of her house. Moving around the house and doing that speed test over and over will tell you exactly where that is. It's a bit of a pain, but at least you'll know. You'll know, say, from this couch, you'll be like Sheldon on, on uh, what is it, on Big Bang Theory. The best spot for Wi-Fi is right here. Well, how do you find that out, I wonder? Probably by going to speed test up, not me. Okay, good. So now, um, this was a lot of nuts and bolts. Let's have a look at Google Meet for a second. Now, most schools are, um, uh, yeah, look, we're seeing, okay, so uh, download speed 4.5, that, that's, a, that's a problem. There must be something wrong there. You're in PEI? There must, might be something wrong there. You never know. It might that be because you're rural. I mean, I'm in rural Newfoundland, so... It might be something wrong with your system. Could be. If you just call your service provider and they'll give you a few ideas, okay? Afternoons are slow, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, I guess, that what I'm saying to people is this. Uh, Andrew, that's, the upload's pretty bad. You'd probably have trouble uploading. Probably have trouble with your video out. But look, what I'm telling people is, uh, don't just take your wireless as being as is. Uh, you want to, um, you want to uh, get the best you can. And that might mean a call to the call to bell or whoever it is you get your stuff from. Um, yeah, so so do that. That's an easy one. And you wanna you wanna start off on the best foot, you know, not broken video and everything. I I had and don't blame it on Google or Facebook or whatever it is you use, and don't blame it on that because um, gener like for the idea of Google Meet going down or Zoom going down, it happens, but not very often. So I the first you may think, ah, oh, that's Google. Them old people at Google, that's their fault. Yeah, probably not. Um, okay, so now let's talk a little bit about Google Meet. Okay, so Google Meet uh, is the platform that most districts are um, telling us that we, we need to use. And that's okay because it's a good platform. Uh, let me just get this going here. Um, so, um, first of all, a few things uh, about Google Meet. Um, let me just show you something, a couple little hacks, a couple little tricks here. Um, Google Meet, when you go to start a Google Meet session, I'm going to share this with you. Sharing is good. Again, like I go into, I have so many of these different platforms I use. Uh, there we go. Uh, okay, so there we go. So Google Meet, 
Um, when you go to join a session, okay, I just started Google Meet, okay, so, but when you go to go into the session, I want to show you something. <clears throat> you see that my uh, video on my camera is nice and clear. It's a high resolution camera, just like most of them are these days. Actually, they all are these days. Um, and uh, I want to keep that. But the, the setting in Google Meet by default is low resolution. I don't know why they do that. But when you go into Google Meet, it sets you at a low resolution, so your video is smaller and fuzzy. So let's just have a look. I'm going to click Join and Meet, and I'm going to just click Continue. Okay, the very first thing that, I, that you want to do when you go into Google Meet is, is go right here, and this little three, three dots right here. You guys are seeing this, right? Um, go right there in that, in that and you want, to, um, uh, you want to click that and go to Settings. Okay, right here, settings. And then um, when you're in settings, you'll see that there's an audio and video. Can you guys see that? Are you guys seeing it? Give me a thumbs up, guys, if you can. Okay, great. Thanks, Angela. Um, thank you, guys. So um, you can see that I can, I can change my speakers, my microphone, my speakers, because this is audio tab right here. See that? And, and then um, I also have video. And on my video, look at this. It sets it to standard definition from the start. As soon as I go in, that's not what we want. We want high definition. So we have our sending video, our sending resolution, which we want to set to high. And we have our receiving resolution we want to send, set to high as well. And that's going to let us see the best video we can, and it's going to be, let us send the best video we can. Now, if you don't set it here, you may not be able to set it when you start a video. It may lock it in, and that's a pain. So you want to do that here. And again, let me just show you that again, just for fun and games. The, this button is right here. Just see the little three dots? You click those little three dots right there. That's the ones right there. Um, and um, you click it. You go to settings, which is right here. This is settings. And in here, you can choose your microphone or your speakers because we're on the audio tab, which is up here at the top. But we're going to go to video. And under video, like we can choose different cameras too. I got a couple of cameras hooked up here, but, but we're not going to change that. We want to set it to high resolution. Okay? Yeah, it might be a bit of a delay. I'm sorry. I, I'm not sure. I mean, my fans on my computer are running like crazy. I got so much stuff open here. Uh, hopefully that's not too bad. If it's a really bad delay, let me know. And I'm going to click done, and then that's it. I got high resolution there. If I don't, it's going to be low resolution, and that's going to be gross. Okay, so we don't want that. So high resolution uh, right there on that one. And that's a really easy one, again, just to get the best results right from the start. Okay, good. I want to let you know that one. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about latency. Google Meet is a near real-time environment. Near real-time, not real-time. Uh, real-time would mean that the instant you make a sound, people hear it. And if we did a test in here, um, you guys would know right away. You've seen this. I'm not going to show you. But the, it's delayed. It's probably half a second. So if I say, hello, you're hearing it a half a second later. So if, you're, if we're trying to do a piano duet or saxophone duet, then the the delay is going to be uh, uh, too much that we're not going to be able to uh, do it because it's going to throw off the the beat between the two of us. Uh, Michelle Ross, look at the little baby, all my jumpins, la. Um, so um, the so we can't do piano duets or anything like that in here. Now I got to tell you, the the I've been my first live internet show I ever did was in 1999. In Los Angeles, and uh, it was with uh, it, it was with, it was really cool. It was with like the bass player from the Who, John Entwistle, and it was really cool. And we had uh, people in in uh, Quincy Jones' studio, and we had we were in the Anaheim uh, Convention Center, and we were playing live, and it, we had delays then. And at that time, we were trying to get to the bottom of why do we have so many delays in getting sound across the internet, and we realized that. A lot of it has to do with speed of light. Now, you can do your calculations, but if we go from here to Toronto, the speed of light is going to give us a little peck of delay. That is going to be compounded with the internet itself, and that becomes a lot of delay. So basically what I'm saying to you is that it's going to be very, very unlikely that you'll ever see a system that will let us play live with no delay. Remember that Roland 
Roland company, when they make a keyboard, seven milliseconds is their delay max. If it's over seven milliseconds, an average musician will see it, will hear it. So seven milliseconds is the max. So bottom line is don't, don't wait for a solution that's going to let you play live like that and be super accurate. So you have your tone, your, your rhythmic center will be right on. It's, you're not going to be able to do that. Now, in saying that, um, you can do a lot of things in Google Meet. And um, <clears throat> uh, I, I know that there's music, composers are writing music now to take into account for this latency. So there may be some things that we might be able to play and things that are new material. Also, if you think about things like Therenity, or, or any kind of piece that's a, like a non-rhythmic non center piece. There's a lot of things we can do in a band situation or any kind of ensemble situation online using even Google Meet with its massive latency. Now, there's also other applications out there that try to streamline this latency. One of them is called Jamulus. Now, myself and Laurie Matthew were on the other day testing between here and Ontario. And I have a server set up in, in Newfoundland to try to make our, to keep our latency down as low as we can. But Jamulus is a piece of software that the latency is down to around 20 milliseconds. So 20 milliseconds, so if you have a saxophone player in one place and a saxophone player in another and they're playing together, it's a 20 millisecond delay, 20, 40 millisecond delay. It's not massive, it's noticeable, but it may be a little tool you might want to play with. I'm not going to get into it here and how to use it but it's something you think about. The reason why I'm saying Jamulus and not some other opportunities that are into some other applications is Jamulus is open source and it's free for all the kids to download. And they, there's no usernames, no passwords, and none of that old cram. It's just download the software for free, use it. That's what open source is all about. So I'm, I'm going to be recommending open source stuff whenever I can. Jamulus is open source. So you might want to check that one out. Um, Jamulus. Yeah, you can do a search for it. I'm not sure what the exact... Yeah, is that the link there, uh, Lynn Tucker? Thank you. Um, okay, so yeah. Um, um, so let me go into Google Meet for a second with you. I just want to show you another thing about Google Meet. And I'm sorry we're covering so much material so fast. I apologize. I feel really bad for you guys. Because it is. Um, we are covering a lot of material. And it is very quick. Um, I don't mean to be like that, but... We don't have a lot of time, you know. Okay, now in Google Meet, uh, Google Meet does a few things that we uh, that we can use. It lets us do our video, obviously. Uh, it lets us um, share screens like we're doing here in Zoom. But it doesn't do a lot of things. One of the things it doesn't do is it doesn't let us raise our hand when we have a question or students can like say thumbs up because I'm feeling good about stuff. So we have to put a little add on in order to make that work. These are called extensions. Now, extensions are little tools that we can install in um, Google Meet that will give us more functionality. Now, there's a, quite a few, and some of them are some of them work really well, and some of them don't. Um, a couple that, like, oh, okay, so one that was really popular and kicking around a lot was um, this one here that you'll actually see on my screen. Whoopsie daisy! This one here, Grid View. I get to uninstall that because grid view is not necessary anymore. Grid view, what it would do is it would, you, if you look at, I don't know what you guys see in, in Zoom, but in, in grid view, all of the, um, oopsie daisy, sorry guys, sorry. Uh, in grid view, it puts all the, all the images, you know, in a grid, you know, you know what I'm talking about, I'm, this is silly. So yeah, you, it makes a grid view, okay? So, um, but you don't need to do that anymore now. Because if you go down to the bottom here, you can see change layout right here. Change layout, they have, Google has introduced grid view of their own. So now you can, it's called tile view. Whoopsie daisy, I didn't mean to get off that so fast. Sorry about that. Let me go bring it up again. So I go up here to change layout right here in Google Meet. And I can choose it to tile view. And tile view will uh, function the same as grid view. That's this one here. That's not a very good oval. I'm not a very good m mouse drawer. So tile view, that's the same as grid view. So we don't need the grid view uh, pl uh, extension anymore. So I got to get rid of that one. But now I just showed you how to do tile view in your system. Another one that I do use is this one up here called Nod. Where do you access tile view? Okay, good question, uh, Jennifer. Uh, I'll just show you that one. If you go down here at the bottom, oh, here we go. Uh, down here at the bottom, 
see my arrows are pointing um, this right here these three dots okay if you go down to those three dots and click it you'll come up to change layout right there You see that guy change layout and when you do change layout then you have the choice of sidebar spotlight which is it'll bring whoever is speaking right to the center all the time and tile view there you go nothing to it now another one that I want to show you is this one up here uh, this is called nod I can actually write down nod in o d so nod nod lets uh, students raise their hands and give thumbs up or thumbs down you know that kind of stuff so it's a, it gives you a couple little options that's really useful because I forgot to ask another question but you guys get the idea about the question asking I'll, maybe I'll ask you another one in a minute or two but for now I'm not going to bother because we're in I'm pushing time but nod lets you say do you guys all understand that and they go yeah thumbs up or no thumbs down or that was a really good performance and they give an applause for that you know we use these all the time in classes all the time if somebody performs it's policy you have to respond you have to give them a, an applause you gotta show the love if somebody uh, performs so we use this all the time and raise hand is good too because you can raise your hand okay another one that I'm using now and you probably saw is this pen tool it's called page marker okay and it's up here is this pen uh, so it's called page let me see if I can write this page marker I should show you something that okay, case page marker I'm writing with my mouse okay but that's not what you're supposed to do you're supposed to you can get these things see see this it's like a little tablet and a pen see that so I could I could do that and that's what I should be doing I didn't plan on drawing on the screen today but you can use this you know and this little little tablet these are not not expensive it's it's a buy company called Wacom W-A-C-O-M Wacom if you're doing like notation on screen and stuff um, um, I use if I'm doing any kind of theory stuff I use this a lot five lines da, 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 real quick it's really easy it's great I have a couple of these I have a big one that's like this big and I have this little one that I keep in my bag so Wacom tablet these are pretty cool and they're pretty cheap too so there you go um, and my friend some of my, my colleagues who teach online they have uh, Bluetooth ones so they can take it back and they can just move around and you know they love it little hand thing on it and stuff it's pretty cool okay um, Okay. Hey, that's cool. Uh, G Marshall, that's pretty cool. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting uh, iPad apps to help you with this. Another thing too, I'm not going to get into today. I have one, two, three, four monitors running right now in this session that I'm using for different things because you guys are over here, but meets up here, and my text, all your texts are over here. So I'm using all my monitors because I need the real estate when I'm teaching online. My main monitor I use when I'm not stuck at home in COVID is a big 52-inch one with uh, several monitors around it. Um, if you want to use your iPad as a second monitor, there's this little piece of software I use called Duet. There's probably a better one now. I, maybe you should look at the reviews, but it's called Duet. I just plug it into my laptop, and all of a sudden I have two monitors. My laptop monitor and my iPad becomes my new monitor. That might be a nice way for you to get some extra real estate. Now, my daughter teaches online a lot. She only likes one screen. Something wrong with her. Anyway, but it says she only likes one screen. So, who knows? Whatever you like. How do you do break rooms? Marianne, thank you. You are excellent. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, Google Meet breaker rooms. I don't even need to show you this in Google Meet. Uh, yeah, and, and for those people who are saying, yeah, looking at me on the screen. Yeah, it's me on the screen. Google Meet. Uh, but I'm going to turn it off now because I'm going to go back to Zoom. So now I'm back. I got that turned off. Um, a lot of, okay, so I had a discussion yesterday with somebody about how these open-ended tools like Google Classroom and Google Meet and Zoom and, and uh, uh, Brightspace, these are really good uh, software because they're open-ended. They don't lock you into one way of doing things. Google Meet, it, 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 applying it to band rehearsals, there's, it, it's just strategies. Let me tell you a strategy that I use, okay? I'll, I'll have a guitar class, 
and I'll have 20 guitar students all over Newfoundland and Labrador, all with their guitars. And I'll see them like I'm seeing you. And they're all with their guitars, and we're going to play a song. We do something, and then we, we work on a topic. And then I, I want to work with somebody separately. So I need to be able to break out and see them. But how do I do it without stopping the lesson? Now, let me back up. When I'm doing a session with students, instrumental students in a group, I set it up so that I'm using synchronous video and asynchronous stuff in uh, Google Classroom. I use it together. So if we're going to talk about a topic, that topic is in Google Classroom. So if a student wants to, I'll have a student, I'll have uh, material there for the students to uh, take out and have it on their screen, or if they want to, they can print it out. Maybe there will be like a, uh, an extension portion of it that will take them to a different part, whatever. It, it, it depends on a topic. But I'll always have stuff there. So we'll start with the class. 15 minutes. We'll do 15 minutes of me working with them. Showing them how to do something, maybe some new chords or maybe some new thing, and they're all there, and I can see. Okay, show me your chords, Johnny. Johnny shows me a chord. Okay, yeah, that's good. Now you guys can mute, mute your microphones and play along with me. So I mute the microphone, and I can see him. I can't listen to him because there's a lag, right? There's a latency, so I can't listen to him. But I'll play, and there, and then after I'll say, now I got, I got a, a, another little tutorial I want them to watch and to work on. It's like, it's like five minutes. So everybody, thanks for playing. Now, I'm going to get you to go to Google Classroom, and there's a video in the folder for you to watch. It's a tutorial, and I want you to have a look at the tutorial and come back to me in a second. Now, while you're doing that, I'm going to go work with little Johnny. So what I do, I'm in Google Meet, and I have grid view going on, like tile view going on. I start a new Google Meet instance. I just go to my waffle, start a new Google Meet, and I invite Johnny. Johnny gets an email, boing, in his in his Gmail, inviting him. So then Johnny just clicks on it. He opens it up into the new the new Google Meet. So now I have two instances of Google Meet going on. I got one here that got the whole class in, in tile view, and they're doing their stuff, and I'm watching them because they got the cameras on. I'm watching them, and they're working away. And over here, I got little Johnny. Hey Johnny, how you doing? Microphone's muted over here. Mike, that microphone's muted. So okay, hey Johnny, how's it going? I see you're having trouble with that chord. Why don't you play for me? Let me see how to do it. We work together on it, right? And then I work one on Good job, Johnny. Let's go back to the other group. I close the session. Johnny's still in the first one, right? So then that, that was a breakout room. So and then also if I have something like, let's say if I say we're going to do a songwriting assignment and I have a class of 20 and I say I want you guys to work in groups of uh, four and you're going to write a song together. I'll have five instances of Google Meet. I'll have one with the whole class and four empties. I'll invite four students or five empties. I'm not very good at math. I'm not a math teacher. What do you want? Come on. Who's checking my math here? So I have five breakout rooms and I invite four students to this one, four students to that one, four students to that one, four students to that one. So they all get their invitations in mail and they pop out to their own. When they go in, they're, they're all, they're in there with just the four that they're working with. And they go, hey guys, let's work away on a thing. They're all still in the full class, but their microphones are muted. But in the breakout room, the individual breakout rooms, they, they're all got their microphones open and they're collaborating on something. So they'll do a sectional, they'll do, they'll do a songwriting thing, they'll do whatever they're going to do, but they'll do it over there. I'm also in them. So I'll go, breakout room number one, and I'll, oh, boys, you're not doing anything. What's on the go? Oh, well, sir, we're just, you know, we're not started yet. Get at it. Go to the next one. Oh, yes, how's it going? Do you want to play what you got so far? Oh, yeah, screen share your text. What are you doing working? Oh, that's good stuff. Oh, sir, we're having trouble with this rhythm. It goes like this. Good stuff. And then go back to, okay, everybody, we're going to come back to the classroom now. And then I close all of them. They all bump right back to the classroom. And then we go continue on. So it, Google Meet is open-ended enough that you guys can just think up strategies. It's a really cool, it's a cool tool that you will come up with really cool ways of doing that kind of stuff. You know, and another thing, like you can go, if you had something like, I don't know, a piece of, uh, like a piece of music for sight reading or, or something that you want the students to work on, you can have the, in, in Google Classroom, you can have the, uh, the, 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 the reproducible master or whatever it is in, is a PDF shared with student one two three four 
five, six, seven, eight gets a different document. Seven, eight, nine, ten gets another document. So when they arrive into the breakout room, they're also have sh they've shared. You've shared with them individually, each one, the right one, um, the thing you got to work on. So then they go and they work on that thing in the breakout room. And then when they come back to the full group, okay, guys, show me what you got. And then they can all share what they got. You know what I'm saying? So there's all kinds of ways of like taking this tool and finding new ways to manipulate it and use it in ways that's going to work for you. Possible to join breakout rooms without being original session. If you create the breakout room, you can invite whoever you want. Um, you can. Uh, you can invite whoever you want. Um, yeah. Can this be done in Google Classroom? Um, you can, if you create a Google Meet session, Google Meet sessions, the links can be, can be put anywhere you want. If you put them in your classroom, you can share them. There's all kinds of ways. But if you go, if you create a Google, like if I'm creating, if I'm creating a, a session, I'll probably want to do that session. I'll probably want to create it in calendar that's associated with my slots, you know. So in, in period one on Monday, I'm, I know I'm going to need breakout rooms. So I'll go in the calendar and I'll create the breakout rooms in the calendar. And then in this breakout room, I'll invite those students. In that breakout room, I'll invite those students. And the one students that I'm inviting for breakout room one, they'll all get an email. Breakout room two, they'll all get the email. And then the next one, they're all getting different emails with different links because of different breakout rooms. Same deal. If room number one is supposed to have a document, well, I'll share that document with the participants in room one. Participants in room two, I'll share that doc the, the second document with the students from room two. You see, it's just a kind of a way of, you know, figuring out how you're going to use the tool. Uh, strategy word moves. Uh, micro, I'm not familiar with Microsoft, te Microsoft Teams. The organization I work for, we never bought into Microsoft that way. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that one. Um, okay. I, I want to move on. Uh, but that's breakout rooms. Breakout rooms are very powerful. You, you can do a lot of cool stuff with breakout rooms. I, I love it. And, and I, you know what? Everything I'm telling you, I've stolen. Because I have teachers that I work with who are master teachers at this stuff and and I see them do it and I steal from them you can steal from me uh, so anyway um, a couple of weeks ago I did a two-hour session on how to do a virtual coffee shop for your for your students your band your whatever how to do a virtual coffee shop how to put on a performance a virtual coffee shop in private for, for parents and guardians and the kids. Uh, it was a two-hour session. Some of the stuff we covered here today, uh, it was also covered, you know, we covered then. Uh, there's so much we can do with this uh, that we're only just beginning to think about it. You know, it's going to be really exciting when we actually start rolling everything out. Um, let me, let me mention a couple of things related to virtual coffee shop, okay? First of all, I'm going to go back to Google Classroom again. I want to talk to you about recording. Now, in, in Google, uh, I was asking you questions throughout the whole session. And for those people who were not here for the, at the beginning, every 10 minutes, uh, Siri was reminding me to ask everybody a question. Now, um, I'm, I'm really big on accountability. Accountability for students, accountability for teachers. We want to make sure that we have our, all of our ducks in a row, and students should do the same. So. If a student is in an online setting, it's really hard, it's really easy for them to dodge engagement. Okay? I'm sorry if there's a latency because we're, I mean, there's two applications. It's really easy for them to dodge engagement. Sir, I'm not turning my camera on. And I'm not turning my microphone on. But I'm logged in. We had a guy here who, like a couple weeks ago, he actually put the picture up uh, buffering. And he actually did a Photoshop picture, tried to get away with it, buffering. But he spelled buffering wrong. Anyway, they'll do everything. Now, so when you have students in your group here, you want to continuously get feedback from them to make sure that they are always engaged. So the idea of having a 10-minute timer go off and asking them a question, preferably about the content, is important because you are, you're, you're making them know that they can't leave the room. And I tell you what, when I, if, I, if I have a student who doesn't respond to my questions, my cell phone is always right there, and I have all their schools on speed dial. So I call their schools, and I go, can I speak to the principal? I'm missing Johnny. He's not there. I just asked a question. He's missing. And they go, oh, I'll be right on it. You can do the same. 
call the home or whatever that is or make note of it whatever but this 10 seconds asking a question is going to continuously keep them on their toes they won't be able to leave the room they won't be able unless they tell you i tell students you can leave the room but you got to let me know and i'm giving you five minutes but they you can always keep them on their toes now attendance attendance in here in google meet we can record our sessions and I would advise you to record everything. I record every class. Um, I, because I, I want to be able to look back and see if I, if I did a good job, or if something comes up, I want to, you know, I want to be able to see it. Also, I make all my last my classes available to students so they can revisit topics, so they can revisit and on their own time and and find out what they missed or maybe they needed to go over something a second time. So I record every single class. Now in here, you record classes by just clicking record right here, right? You just click record, and you say ask for consent, and you accept and then you're recording. So then we're recording the class. Now, what happens when you record a class? When you record it, um, and I'm going to stop my recording now because I don't need that recording. Three things are recorded. The video and audio. Okay, the video and audio. That's recorded. Okay, and it's put into a file, one file. What's also recorded is all the text. All those answers that the students gave you are recorded. They're all there. So when you go, and you, you're saying to yourself, where are these recording? Where, where, what is this recording you're talking about? What is this recording he speaks of? I'm going to go to my Google Drive, and I scroll down on my Google Drive. Don't mind the mess. This is a bit of a landfill. So I go down on my Google Drive to... Am I in the right Google Drive? No. I'm in the, no, I'm in the right Google Drive. i got a dozen Google Drives. Uh, to meet recordings. Holy cow, I think I'm in the wrong drive. Uh, yeah, I think I am. No, I'm not. Hang on a second. Let me double check this. I've got so many accounts. I'm just, it's up, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Meet recordings. That's what we're looking for here. So I'm going down, scrolling down. You guys see it? Am I losing my mind? You passed yeah. it. It was a red folder. Ah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you very much. I told you a long time ago, I'm stunned as a block of wood. I really am. So meet recordings right here. So if you go in there, the like this is a session I did a little while ago, right? So it was a three-part session. So um, what's recorded is the video. And also recorded is the text of everything that was typed in during that session as time stamped. Now, if your students go on the missing list and they're not responding to your questions during the class, that's going to be recorded in here. And then when your parent or a guardian comes back and says, my little Johnny, he definitely pays attention all the time. Well, I'm sorry, but, you know. And you can do a search. If you do a like control F, little Johnny, search for little Johnny, it'll show you all the entries that little Johnny made and or didn't make. So uh, if I, uh, so this is, uh, can be used as an attendance tool. Now, I don't have time during classes to take attendance. I juggle cats during classes. I'm juggling cats all the time. So I'm always very, I try to always find ways of, of putting things off and getting it at a time that's better. So what I do is I record the classes in here. It creates a text document and at the end of the day, I take out my register and I search up John Smith. Yep, he was there. Good. Sally Smith. Yeah, she's there. Whatever. And I go down through the full list and it, all their names are here because they typed in their answers on the list. And then while we're in class, I always make sure during class that, that everybody is contributing. And if I see that somebody is not typing in during this class, then I will say, little Johnny, how come you're not typing in answers to my questions I'm asking you? So I keep an eye on that. So that will be a record for your attendance. So doing it this way, asking these questions throughout the class gives you two, it's a double purpose, right? Okay. So that is that. Um, I want to stop. Um, no, nah, that, that's that's pretty much. I think I got everything covered. I think I do. I, have you guys? Is it too much? I'm. I'm. We got to do Q and A. I, I and I see you guys have some questions. I saw some of your questions. Um, yes, and David said about there's a tool. I think David said there's an extension for for attendance. Yes, David, absolutely. The problem I got with that is, number one, I don't trust the technology. Number two, if a student leaves early or comes in late, the attendance tool may not grab them, right? 
So because if you set the attendance and grab it at the beginning of class and they show up 20 minutes late because of technical problems, you may not get them. You see what I'm saying? So that's the reason why I, I you can use those tools maybe as a second level of security for the for the attendance, but um, I don't trust them as much as doing it the way I'm saying. It, you do what you like, but that's that's just my two cents. And what uh, what David is talking about is we showed you earlier about the tool for writing on the board, the pen, the marker tool, and I showed you Nod, which gives you thumbs ups and stuff like that. The attendance tool is also another extension. And you can search for, go to Google and do search for Google Meet extensions and you'll find all, all find tons. <laughs> oh my jumpers. Oh my, that's, that's, that is, that's pretty crazy. You have sleep all day. Okay, so um, how do you want to do some, how do you want to do some uh, questions? And I know that during Q&A, a lot of times people filter out, but before you do filter out, I have two, a couple things I want to say to you. First of all, I really appreciate you guys listening to me. I really do. It means a lot that you guys will actually pay attention to me blabbering on this time. It really means a lot to me. And the second thing is, if you have any question at all, don't hesitate to connect with me. I do these right across Canada, and I have a lot of teachers who are connected with me this way. Feel free to add me on Twitter. Feel free to add me on Facebook, YouTube, whatever you want. And if you have a question, you send it to me. Don't think I don't want to answer you. Don't think I won't answer you. I'll probably get on Facebook, on FaceTime or something like this, and we'll answer it together. So you... You don't be afraid to send me a message. I'm more than happy to help you out in any way I can. Now, Q&A. What do you think? Oh, thanks, Tom. So, um, what about we do it this way? The, if anybody wants to grab a microphone, um, in Zoom here, do we have a way of people putting their hands up? Is that a possibility in here? Yeah? Can we do that? If you want to take it, maybe uh, uh, Angela or Lynn, do you want to kind of moderate that? Who would like to ask a question? I guarantee you I won't have the answer. But I'm going to lie. I'm really good at that. And then you're going to think I, I knew what I was talking about. This is a great game. Okay, so. Ben um, asked a question earlier. Um, it's now in the chat. If you want to look there, Andrew, it says, um, Andrew, can you show us what you might do in one of your online classes? An example of what type of things you might have your students do uh, or what, they, uh, what you have them do. Um, and if they play separately or recorded, lots of questions there from Dan, um, but that's in the chat. Well, well, Dan, the, it's a good question. Dan, I, I teach, I teach uh, a general music course, which is a full year, two credit course, uh, experiencing music. And in that course, we cover a wide range of musical things. Uh, from composition to exploring different music styles and, and playing the tune whistle, you know. So that's a general music course, full year heavy course so we do a barrage of things and we do the full curriculum that is delivered in the in a bricks and mortar classroom in newfoundland labrador we do the same curriculum online so and our courses are very transparent so i have to make sure all the outcomes are covered or else my boss will say find a new job so um i um so it, what we do it's it's we do everything you know it's i try to make as interactive and as rich as we can it's always room for improvement, but composition things, performances, um, they play for me, I play for them. We also bring in a lot of artists. Um, we have live artists that perform a, a lot throughout the year, definitely once a month, sometimes many times. Um, so they'll come on, answer questions from students, play for students, students will play for them. We do a wide range of things like that. Um, so like... It, and that's, that's experiencing music. Then I teach applied music, which is a practical course. Uh, and applied music fiddle or violin, applied music guitar. I have a colleague who teaches, uh, uh, does applied piano. So we have, so we do, we deliver all those. We can't do everything like saxophone and trumpet and all that because it, the, it's the logistics of, of only two, te two music teachers uh, taking on all the instruments is very difficult. So we have difficulty with that. But hopefully that answers your question. It's, it's pretty broad. You know, we do a lot. We do a lot of things. Um, how do you... Uh, so, okay, I see we got Go Band. Uh, how do you perform group concerts? Do you... Uh, re okay. Um, we don't do group concerts um, because of the latency. 
So we don't do anything live like that. That's not going to be possible. And, and I don't know if it'll ever be possible. The closest thing you have is Jamulus, and that's the delay even there is like 20 milliseconds minimum, and, and, and that's, going to be, that's not going to be able to make that really work. But we do do things like coffee shops, coffee houses, where we will do a live show in Google, and we can invite people in. So uh, Johnny can play, then Sally can play, and then Susie can play, and they can do all that kind of thing one at a time. Um, one thing I didn't get to today is how to play recordings through um, Google Meet. Uh, but in Coffee House, sometimes students don't want to play live. They want to send a recording in. So we, they would send in a recording they make on their phone. And then all you do is you drag the recording into a, a Google Chrome browser window. Just drag it into the window. And then you go into Google Meet and you share that tab and all you do is push play and Bob's your uncle so we do that kind of thing that's so performances we do are are uh, they're all one person that kind of thing sometimes we'll do it where they'll send in like we'll do projects throughout the year where we'll all record uh, the intro of Eye of the Tiger and then they'll send it all and I'll put them all together so they sound like all like 25 guitarists playing Eye of the Tiger stuff like that we do things like that too and that's that's cool that's cool too um, cool let's go on to another one uh Sonia what do we use for that oh well I do a lot of video editing so like I use I use Premiere Pro but you can use um, for putting videos together like that there are some tools that are automated I, I don't use those like again I, I I edit video professionally so like I do TV shows and things so I use Premiere Pro but you can use iMovie you can use uh, Windows Movie Maker and there's probably some tools that other people might use that might be able to use for that um, putting the tracks together yeah the uh, the easiest thing in the world for that give them a click track give them a click track that are hearing it so that you know then you can cue it to that you know and I get them to count in one two three four and then they start playing and then I I, I sync it to their count in it makes life a lot easier um, okay cool we're getting some answers to questions down there too do you have a click track for kids to record on yeah uh, and I do that yeah sometimes I'll do a click track I'll have a master track to record on. I'm doing one right now with the with the Newfoundland Deaf Choir, and they're doing this combination of students who who are uh, hearing and non-hearing, and it's signing and it's uh, singing. So um, we sent out a, a recording with the uh, click track and the piano accompaniment. The students would listen to that in the ear ear pods, and then they would record themselves and and do the and and also at this and we, there was a video so that they could sign with the video or they could listen to the audio uh, depending on what they're doing signing or singing and then all of it was sent back to me and I use Premiere Pro to brrr, stack it all together and make it all so it's all synchronized and it all works out great uh, acapella students to play do you use apps like no I've never used acapella I've heard I've heard it mentioned but I've never used that um, Movavi uh, for audio editing okay cool cool I, is that an open source one I think that's cool. Keep the questions coming. Uh, how do you perform concerts? Yeah, we saw that one. A lot of individual concerts. Um, do you have a budget for guest artists? No. Uh, no, Michelle, that's a really good question. And uh, what I do is I partner up with um, with artists and uh, and publishers and promotion companies, that kind of thing, so that they get really good publicity for performing for my students online. God love them. I wish I could pay them, but I'm a, I'm a poor teacher in poor school. So um, they generally they do it from home, in their pajamas, <laughs> you know. So they 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 do it. It's pretty low key. So they do it pretty easily for wherever they are. It's online. It's not like you got to visit your school. So generally, when they, it comes up, I usually say, now you know, is there any fee? And they go, nah, not for that. So we've had Joel Plaskett. We've had Danny Fernandez. We've had Lights. Uh, we've had. Uh, Oh, we've had we've had loads and tons of classical, tons of jazz. It's you know, so it's really cool. Um, what do you, what if you don't have Premiere Pro? Yeah, and again, I'm not sure. I can't give you any examples about uh, other apps to use for doing the the lining up the music, um, because I, I use Premiere Pro. Um, but uh, I'm sure like a quick a quick uh, look around will will probably give that you know that answer. Um, some research. Uh, I do I, I do a lot of research on these things you know like when I if I'm trying to do something new I'll research it to death I do deep dives 
and on the tech. So if you're looking for some product that's going to be able to line up video to doing these virtual things, then uh, you might want to do a little bit of YouTube searching and stuff, and you may come up with some good answers, you know? Get used to doing that, because in the next little while, you may need to. Uh, you may need to be doing some research for that sort of stuff. And again, reach out to me, and I'll try to help you as much as I can, too. Um, let's get some more questions. Let's get some more. I, I, somebody sent a question in earlier today. Uh, let me see if I got it here. Yes, I do. Uh, somebody sent a question, questions in earlier. Um, um, if we provide a click track, what will the best tools be for students to submit performance uh, that we combine? Yeah, that's what we were just talking about. That question was asked today earlier. Um, hang on now. When students co-compose, how do you show, play their creations? Well, it depends on what it is. If it's in a tool like, um, like we use Audacity a lot, so the students record themselves, so they, if they compose something, then you know, they'll have an MP3 of what they've composed. And sometimes we'll use, we use other tools that will, um, you know, let them, you know, well, Audacity is one we use a lot. We also use, um, especially in my general music class, we use, um, whenever we need like a backing beat for like Tim Whistle or something like that, we always use um, uh, Incredibox. Incredibox is pretty cool, you know, it's really rough. But it's it's cool. It just it lets the students just make make a little backbeat, so they can do hot cross buns, and they can use Incredibox and put down a backbeat behind you know, the hot cross buns and record it using Audacity, and they sound like a million bucks. So you know, can you make tracks in Audacity really easy, Lanny? Really easy. Uh, hang on. Audacity. Let me just see. Let me just see what I can do here. Uh, microphone, speakers, okay, here we go. I don't know if this is going to work, because I, I didn't wire this up for this today. But hang on, watch this. <clears throat> here we go, ready? Oh, I haven't, got, I haven't shared it. Okay, hang on, i got to share this. I'm sorry, I didn't even share it. Here we go. Look at this audacity here. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Nothing to it. Now, if I play it back, One, two, I don't know if you can hear that. Four. Can you hear that? Can you guys hear that? Yeah. Okay. So then, if I if I go, let me put my headphones on. Okay. I put my headphones on. Okay. So now, oh, I'm hooked up. Strides again. Watch this now. A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z, uh. and uh, yeah, and then if I play that back, I'll turn the volume back up again. Okay, so one, two, three, four, A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z. Now come on, you know you love that, you know it. I have I have another career. I'm going to be, I've got, I got a Juno coming. Uh, so you see, like, Audacity is really easy to use. It's, uh, it's a piece of cake. Um, and uh, my, it's free, and it'll run on the oldest of equipment. So if a student is home and they've got a really old computer that their Uncle Sam gave them, it'll run on that. And I'm all about equity. You know, I want to make that, you know. Yeah, and again, if, if you missed it earlier, Video Guide to Audacity Video Guide to Audacity, is, you can have that, that's free. I just, uh, when this whole Corona stuff happened and people were looking for resources, I just released it to the public because it's a commercial product, but I just released it to the public. You can have it because it's, uh, I want people to have stuff to use. So, um, okay, anybody else got uh, any uh, questions? Let's keep going. We got 10 minutes left for more questions. I want to hear more. Ask me something hard. Evaluation. Okay, well, well okay, so first of all, um, when you're evaluating, like, okay, uh, I have, I use Google Classroom a lot. And in my Google Classroom, and I wanted to show you this today, but I'm, I'm not allowed. So in my Google Classroom, um, I'll have, like, throughout the year, I'll have 95 pieces of evaluation. Okay? So around 95. So that will be all kinds of projects and things that the students will do throughout the entire year. So they're constantly submitting stuff. Like, I'll tell them, um, uh, like, okay, so with Audacity, for example, 
I, I give them an audacity assignment. Audacity assignment, the first one is record yourself saying your name. So they record yourself saying a name. And then the next one, which is, you know, it's worth like nothing, like pennies in the final, in the final grade. Then the next assignment is um, do a, uh, uh, like the beast, the, what I just did. And it's quarter notes. So, you know, do quarter notes, beatbox, and record yourself. So they do it. And then later on, I say, pull out your beatbox quarter notes and play hot cross buns over your, as, tr as track two, on your team whistle. So then they have to listen to their headphones to the beatbox. One, two, da, 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 to use an audacity for that. So, you know, and then they'll share it. Like, they'll share it with their students, too. And then, as you get further along, we do all kinds of different things. But I try to use the tools to help us. So we do a session, a section on um, Foley sound. Like Foley sound effects, you know? So sound effects for TV shows and movies. So what the students do is they have this assignment called um, Halloween Soundscape. So by the time Halloween comes around, they know enough that they can go to soundbible.com, soundbible.com, and they can download all kinds of scary Halloween sounds. Wolf sounds, rah, screaming sounds, whatever, it's thunder. And they download all these samples, and they know about MP3 files and WAV files, because that's also a little thing they've learned. So they bring it on down, and um, and then they drag and drop these sounds into Audacity, and they make a soundscape a minute and a half long that tells a story. So it'll probably start off with footsteps through the woods, and it'll be thunder, and then you'll hear rain falling, and then you'll hear, oh, and you'll hear, then it, would it be scary sounds running through the woods, and, you know, whatever. It's like, a, it's, it's, it's a Halloween soundscape. So that's another one, and they and then they, they do that. So they have certain criteria that they have to do. Use so many samples, it has to be a certain length, the samples have to go together, they have the beginning and ending parts, have to be a certain way. So, you know, they're learning to use the tools. So by the end of the year, they can do audacity like crazy. So anyway, it's good stuff. Soundbible.com. Yes, thanks, Lynn. Uh, what grade are we talking about for Soundscape? Um, I've used it down to grade 7. Um, I, don't, I teach grade 10, 11, 12. That's our high school. So, uh, but I've used it in grade seven, and I've heard of teachers using that lesson, that that assignment in lower grades be below that. So, you know, it's quite easy. Um, the uh, sample, the, using samples in Audacity is real easy because they can download drum loops and all kinds of musical elements and put them into Audacity too, and and build things that way too. Um, I do. I I don't do that in Audacity so much. I do it more of like uh, Foley, you know, or recording themselves, uh, not bringing down samples that they find, but recording themselves. I use it for that more so. Uh, balancing their snare, bass capture, dynamics, and recording. Any suggestions? Ah, drums. Yeah, we'll see. It's so loud, right? Turn the gain way down. Like just creeping, just just cracked open. That microphone just be cracked open, and move it away from the drum set. That's a tough one. Recording drums is tough anyway. But microphone placement and keep that volume, keep that gain way down. I teach beginner band. Uh, Jody said beginner band school instruments are shared. Kids don't have them home. What should we play on? You know, five days. Um, I I've had a, a few discussions in the last little while about um, uh, music kits for home. Now, um, the, it'd, be, it'd be ideal if we could have a kit that every student could have, like, you know, send home a trumpet. But the fact is that I could, can't do that. So um, the kits almost need to be in, like, they need to be worthless because they, they'll be lost or they'll be taken or, you know. So what some teachers are doing is that they're um, putting, together, putting together an inventory of a found item music kit. And that will be things like, um, like I don't know, like say, you know, a, a, some kind of like pill bottle with like thumbtack or like rocks in it or something. And then um, four or five um, uh, 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 paper towel tubes cut to different lengths so that they can do like a little bit of boom whacker stuff, you know, things like that. Now, I don't teach elementary, so I, I, I don't really know what, what would be needed there. But the idea of making... A, definitely a percussion found item kit that could be really easy to do so um, the idea would be that at the beginning of September uh, you could send that home to kids here's a list of found items that you need to get 
and and make it real straightforward and then you know see where see where it goes from there that's a discussion that's been happening um and, and i don't know if that's um i don't know what that kit would look like and i don't know how many outcomes it would satisfy uh, but it probably wouldn't be bad anyway because every kid could use a shaker every kid could use a little homemade boom whacker you know and maybe even little things like rubber band on a thing you know i'm this is very rudimentary i know it's not a trumpet but it's but you know what it might get us out of a jam one thing i didn't talk to you guys about as well is at the beginning because i was rushed for time is that <clears throat> We don't need to have every outcome planned out to December. When, up until five years ago, the group I work with would not allow us to teach any curriculum until the 1st of October. And the reason being is that when students get online to take an online lesson with Andrew Mercer, they don't have a clue about technology, about getting, like, where do I upload stuff? How do you do that? Where do I, how do I, how do I turn on a microphone? I don't know anything about that. So we would spend the entire month of September working on the logistics. And we and that's it. That's a reality. So nowadays we don't do that because we we don't it, it's kids are a lot more technologically enabled when they on the first day. But we still take the first 2 to 3 weeks. 2 to 3. No curriculum, only logistics. So you guys don't need to be planning for December. You need to get through September, October. Don't plan on doing any curriculum until October. I mean, that's what I would do. I mean, that's my gut. And I've been at this for 20 years. I wouldn't do any curriculum in October. It'll be compressed things. It'll compress things a bit. I know we all have packed curriculum. But, but the bottom line is that your students need a little bit of time to acclimatize. They need to learn that it's okay to be late for class because of a technical problem. They need to know how to upload a file. They need to know how to turn on their camera. They need to know how to do this and do that. Take some time, play some games, do some things that are going to get them comfortable at the beginning. And part of that might be scavenger hunt to fill their kit with shakers and boom whackers and I don't know, whatever things they can find. So, you know, that just keep that in the back of your mind. It's not a mad rush at the beginning. You need to give yourself a little bit of space, and especially your students. They are going to be anxious. Listen, I have, I've had 20 years of this, and my students get on every year, and they go, Sir, I've never done this before. I really don't know what I'm doing. And this is 2020. So your students have, many of you have probably never experienced online learning, so they're going to be the same way. Trepidation. Oh, thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, no problem. And Denise Gagne is doing a lot of good stuff. Thanks, uh, Gene Marshall. Denise Gagne is doing a lot of stuff. I know friends of mine are sitting in on the Denise Gagne stuff. So that's good to see, too. She's she's doing that. That's, that's good. Uh, phone mics. And you see, uh, students have concerns about their phone mics. Uh, what do you mean? Is the phone mics like they're not clear enough or something? Uh, the students. Um, I have my students send in recordings. Yeah. And uh, constant recordings, and. Some of my trumpet players find it, they're like, oh, it sounds really bad. They're used to playing at a certain level and they yeah. feel like they don't sound good. And I don't have any suggestions. They're using their phones to record themselves. I don't have any suggestions as to what they should do, where they should put them. Yeah. To, to even just make them feel a little bit better about what they're sending me. Right. Well, well the, the very first thing I would say to you is about mic placement. Make sure that their microphones, trumpet, make sure their microphones are far away from them. Like, you know, really, like, they'll, they'll probably put it right next to them, but it, the, the blast is going to... The phones have what's called auto gain control on it, so as soon as it hears a loud sound, it cuts back, you know? So, um, and there really isn't a whole lot of way around that. So you need to get them to put their phone, like, I'm going to say, 15, 20 feet away from them, and their sound will be a lot better. They will be a lot more satisfied with the sound, 15 to 20 feet away from themselves. Try that first and see what that does. Now another thing too that I do with my stuff um, where is my stuff? Hang on a second. Okay, so some, uh, some of the kids are going to be recording things outdoors and, and they may be recording the voices and stuff like that. Okay, so this here is a um, this is a, like a like a sock, like a um, um, 
You're going to laugh. Hang on. Um, oh, here we go. No, shoot. I thought I had some. Okay, so my students, they, I, I get them to do assignments where they go out and they get environmental noises, you know, sounds, and they had to use their phone for it. But you know, you take your phone into the wind, and of course Newfoundland is always windy, um, it gets really noisy. Now this here is a, is a little muff, you know, it goes over the, uh, the my, they use it over this hand, this handheld thing, and I put it over like that, okay? Same concept can work for your phone. But see, the thing is, nobody has these muffs to go over the phone. Who has that? But what they do have is nylons. So, and, and you might say, they may say, wait a second, I don't have any nylons. Okay, you go to the shoe store. And you go in the shoe store, and you take three or four of those little footy things you put on. You know what I'm talking about? Those little nylon footy things. Take three or four of those. And you haul them on over your phone with an elastic band. I had an elastic band here earlier, too. I got nothing here. Here we go. Um, so you put a little nylon over the thing and you put a elastic band around it so the nylon goes over the microphone end you know the, that end down here where the microphone is and then all of a sudden you got a beautiful wind blocker so then they record it sounds beautiful singers too because singers are going like they're singing into the microphone and it's like <laughs> so that really stops that so I, I tell the students that like go to the shoe store and borrow a couple of those little things I'm aiding and abetting at the delinquency of juvenile. I know, but they can also take, take nylons and cut the nylons. If they, they can take a pair of mom's nylons or whatever, and they can cut those. So, you know, but the idea is that that would help it too. And for ones like, um, uh, like loud instruments like um, uh, trumpet and drums, I'd say move it far away from yourself. Okay, so that's just a thought. Okay. Uh, Play with backing tracks. Everyone is more confident when they're in a group. Yeah, and Jody, that's a good that's a good point. Uh, I said earlier that when my my tin whistle students are playing hot cross buns, I get them to use Incredibox, which I'm sure a lot of you have seen. Incredibox, um, I use that to just lay down a backbeat. So they lay down a backbeat and then they do hot cross buns over the backbeat, and it sounds great. They can also go on YouTube and find all kinds of cool YouTube uh, accompaniments that they can play along with too, and there's software for doing that too. What is that you put over your phone? Um, well, the, this thing I did, well, this is actually like a thing that comes, you can get it in music stores for microphones, you know? It's like a, uh, it's a wind blocker. I got one here too. This, right? It's, this is for my shotgun. Sorry about the noise. So that stops the plosive, stops the P's and K's and stuff for making your microphone blow. And it also, uh, for wind noise too. So that's what this, that's what this is. Um, uh, backing tracks, yeah, and there's lots of things out there for black backing tracks to help um, that you can, like there's software and stuff, like we used to use Band in a Box for years, I don't even know if that's still around, that was around for decades, it probably still is, that was a great company, I like those guys, Har what was it, another one I used too, we didn't get into this today, but for theory, I use Harmonic Visions uh, software Music Ace, Music Ace Maestro, um, we have a provincial license for it here, and uh, you know what? I use it with my high school kids. They they like it. I get some grief from them, but but for the most part, it's a great little thing. So what I do with Music Ace is I start going through the topics in Music Ace, the theory topics, and um, we do them in class, talk about them, and then I say, okay, now you got to do lesson one or lesson two in Music Ace, and then they go off and they do that, um, and then they submit a screen capture showing me that they got it completed. Piece of cake. Works like a charm. And I don't know about you guys, but our province has a provincial license for that. Um, every school in the province has it. So we have it. So Harmonic Vision, that's right, yeah. Great company. They've been around forever. And you know what? Back in the day, back in the, back 2000, I think it was? I, I had a different life back in 2000. Anyway, um, my team that I had uh, working for me, we did a full ed educational evaluation of Harmonic Vision Music Ace to see if it was educationally sound. And we came back that it was extremely positive. So I'm confident uh, as a picky educator that it's educationally sound product. So I have no reservations in recommending that. And har that software was, in, was made in 1998. And it's still relevant today. So it's a bit quirky, you know, like the little guy, the Austrian accent, he's a bit quirky. But you know what? It gets the job done.
I like it. Andrew, we're about five minutes past the hour. And so, um, and I, know, I think we could probably go all night. I suspect that there's probably a million more questions here. So if there's perhaps one last question or Andrew, if you have some final thoughts for us, um, this, this might be the moment to, 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 to do that. And then for, for our guests, Andrew did mention that, um, you know, if you need to reach out to him, if you have any questions, um, he's, he's um, graciously um, opened his, email and um, social media to us. So thank you for that, Andrew. So any final thoughts or one last question? Well, I just put my email into the uh, into the chat. It's Andrew Mercer at NLESD. That's Newfoundland Labrador English School District. Uh, NLESD.ca. Um, get me on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, whatever you like. Uh, um, feel free. I'm happy to connect with you any way that we can. Um, my final thought is... Um, First, when I started doing these sessions, since we uh, meeting with teachers, one-on-one, -on -one, 10, 50, 70, whatever, um, I, um, the, the sentiment was, the sentiment was, we, maybe we'll be okay in the fall. Maybe we'll be back in school in the fall. And I remember at the very first session saying, we're not going back in school in the fall. We may be back in school, but the idea of not teaching online I don't think that's going to be there. The fact is that in some form or another, you're going to be delivering some music education online. Perhaps you'll be back in school, and two of your class, two of your students will be home. They'll need to be teach. They'll need to be taught. Um, or perhaps you're in school and half of your students are at home and half are in school. Or perhaps your students come in for half the time and the other half time you teach them from home. Whatever the recipe is going to be. I'm pretty confident that you're going to be delivering music education online in some form or another in the fall. You don't want to come to that realization in August. You want to be prepared now. And being prepared now, some of our policymakers are not going to come to that conclusion until the fall. And we need to be advocates now. We need to advocate that we can deliver online. Because, and we can deliver in a, in a lockdown school situation, but we can deliver. You don't want to have an administrator say, Andrew, do you think you can deliver music education online? I'll go, I don't know. I don't know about that. Because next thing they go, okay, fine. We're good. I got it. You're teaching English in the fall. You know? So you don't want that. You want to be advocates. You want to be people that you're yelling to say, we can do this. Don't deny children their music education. We have the technology to make it happen. Be that advocate. Be loud and be confident. And I'm telling you, I've been at music education for 20 years. And in the early days, I would people would have rip-roaring arguments with me, telling me that you can't teach music over the Internet. They were wrong then. And any policymaker that believes that is wrong today. So we need to step up. And at the beginning, I talked about the landscape of difficulty things. Performing Mahler Live is at the top of that peak. But the outcomes, the, the self-awareness, the, the musicianship, the development of all these beautiful outcomes that we have available for our students, they're all down here at the bottom. The peaks, let's put them aside for now. Let's put that aside. Let's focus on the things that we can do very good. All these attainable outcomes, the low-hanging fruit, let's get those nailed. And you know what? I said earlier, take, the month of September is going to be acclimatizing your students, not acclimatizing you. You need to do that now. And then when September comes in, you're a pro. And then when October comes around, they're getting those low-hanging fruit, those attainable outcomes. You're nailing them in October. November? Everybody's going to be so comfortable. They've been doing this for 50 years. That's what November is going to be like. But we can't do it if we're scrambling in August. We can't. we got to advocate and we got to educate ourselves now. So I'm really happy to see all of you here because that tells me that, you know, I'm preaching to the choir. So that's good to see. And I really appreciate it. And like I said at the beginning, I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you guys. You're all excellent. Not just Lorley and Matthew. I've known Lorley for years and she's excellent. But everybody else, you're all great. It's wonderful to see you. So thank you very much for the time. I really appreciate it.
Thank you so much, Andrew. There's there are a few other questions that have come in, but I'm going to suggest everybody to um, if you do have more questions for Andrew, please um, email him. Andrew, I don't think your email actually showed up in the feed. Oh, so oh I'm no, it didn't. Just, I, oh, sorry about that. You uh, can add that again. But if and you can right. always reach out to us at the OBA, and we can put you in touch with Andrew as well. Um, so that's great. But thank you so much, Andrew. Thank you for sharing your expertise and your, your wisdom and um, just general collegial support. Um, I think everybody's feeling quite anxious right now and, and coming to more of these kinds of sessions and working together, I think is, is helping to alleviate some of that anxiety. So, so thank you so much. And we wish you all the, well, uh, all the best with your, your work as well. Um, you know, this is across around the world and across the country. So uh, well, we wish you the best. It's my pleasure. And I, I will say to you that I've been teaching online for 20 years and, but in September, uh, forget COVID. I'm trying a whole bunch of new things in September. I am. And I, in COVID or no COVID, I would have been doing that anyway. A whole bunch of new techniques, new technologies. I'm rolling it all out in September from virtual reality to new tools for like collaborating. I, you know, I'll be trying it all. So this is a time for everybody to explore some new tools and new techniques. So pretty exciting. Fantastic. Thanks again. And thanks everyone. You can join me with a, a big thanks for to Andrew. Thank and you. Wish you all well, and hopefully we'll see you all next Wednesday for the next session.